Welcome back. This is part eight of my Ultimate Doom Builder tutorial series. In this series, we're just creating a Doom 2 map from scratch for vanilla uh, limit removing style source ports. I'm targeting Crispy Doom. And along the way, I'm just explaining my process and teaching you some tips and tricks on how to use Doom Builder and how things work in Doom. Here is our map we've been working on. I did make a few minor edits. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, first thing, front corner of our building, these used to be square. They were like this. I changed these to be rounded like this and I did that on both sides. And if I hop in visual mode, let me turn highlighting off. You can see I used our support three divider texture here. So it's important to set a theme as you're working on your map. And one of my themes for this map is support and dividing textures are generally going to be support three. So that just gives us a visual cohesion. From a gameplay perspective, what this does is it makes it a little easier to walk through this space here. If you saw earlier when I was actually in the game engine, I kind of had trouble navigating these corners. Just kept getting hung up on this. This ought to fix that. And just to prove that, let's go ahead and fire up Crispy Doom and we'll take a look. It would help if I could actually walk upstairs. So it's it's immediately obvious to me that I can I can step through here a lot more easily. So watch your corners. Doom's collision detection, especially in the more conservative source ports, can be a little janky. And when that was just this square 90 degree corner before, that was a problem area. Second thing, I added a line def and made the back of this alleyway darker. So now as you know, you look at the front. There's one light level, then you get to about here, and it gets darker. So I'm just having it sort of fade into the darkness there. Just a, a nice use of lighting. Then, third thing I did, if I step inside, I put a little window up here. And that just opens the space up a little bit. So let's go back to Doom Builder, and let's continue. We need to expand upon this blue carpeted room. I think what I'm going to do for effect here is I'm going to go ahead and define the exit area for the map. So what I'm thinking here, let's put go to V for vertex mode. I'm going to put a vertex here, put a vertex here, and I'm going to put some little 45 degree angles there, drag this down to about here, and this will be like the entryway into our exit. I talked about using verticality. So you can use just minor changes in floor and ceiling heights to great visual effects. I think I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to take, let me turn highlight mode back on, take these two sectors, raise them one tick, deselect this one, raise that one tick. Now I'm going to copy this step one texture here. And so this doesn't really affect gameplay, but it just looks good. Little height variations like that will help greatly with the visuals of your map. Next, I'm going to grab the ceiling here, drag this down, and I'm watching at the bottom left. And I'm just going to look for what looks good. We'll do, we'll go ahead and do ceiling height of 128. I think that's fine. Now this is going to be a natural divider texture. I'm going to copy this support three, paste here, paste here. Select them both and set the texture offsets to zero. For, I guess, continuity's sake, I'm going to paste the star tan up here. Hit auto align. Um, it's failing to align, so we're going to have to upper unpeg this. And now that lines up. So now we need an actual exit door. Um, in a UAC base design like this, this is how I tend to do this. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to reuse our divider texture here. Do a little 45 degree thing here. Then I'm going to draw a 64 by 16 and I'm going to do that three times. Like so. Grab this support texture, paste here, paste here, fix our offsets. There's probably a keyboard short for, shortcut for fixing offsets, but I don't know it. So there's three sectors here. I'm going to have two light sectors and then this is going to be a door sector. I'm going to go ahead and set up the door. Take this on the ceiling, set this to flat 20. Go back to map mode. For doors, you need to make sure that the line defs are facing outward. Both of these are facing left. 
And that's a problem in vanilla Doom. So I'm going to flip the right one with the F key. And now this one is facing this way. This one is facing this way, which is perfect for doors. I'm going to grab this upper, this upper, and we're going to look in the doors category and use exit door. Next, we're going to set these side textures to door track. We're going to make sure they're lower unpegged so that they don't move with the door. What we want is as the door moves up and down, that texture remains stationary. And that's what's going on here, so that is set up correctly. We're going to drag this floor, or the, the door's ceiling, all the way down to the floor height, like so. And now if you notice, there's a slight discontinuity right here where the texture repeats. And that is because the texture is taller than the space it's in. We're going to grab this sector, this sector, pull them down one tick to fix that. Now I'm going to grab all four of these sectors. These are going to be lights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to doors and I'm going to use exit door. Now, if you look at this texture, this is actually sort of like multiple textures in one. They, they compactified stuff and put different areas into one texture just for, I guess, like memory usage. You know, this game's from 1993. And in those days, a what 75 megahertz Pentium was top of the line and it had like four megabytes of RAM, maybe eight. So they did a lot of tricks to save space and it's gonna seem really outdated in today's world, but you know, that's when Doom was created. So some of that still exists. I don't want it to look like the, that door. So I'm going to use the side arrow keys and I'm going to drag these over to get to the, the light section of that texture like this. And now we have these light bars. Now I'm gonna grab these two sectors and I'm gonna crank the brightness all the way up to 256 like this. And so it's starting to kind of visually pop here. Also going to grab the door itself and raise the brightness some. Now, now here's a trick, like when you look at this from where you can actually be, you can't see the door sector because the door is shut. But if you go out of bounds in visual mode, now I can see, you know, if I'm from above, I can see the floor sector here, the floor side. I go down here and look up. Now I can grab the ceiling. So that's a little trick just to be able to access areas that you, you normally can't. I'm going to select this sector, turn the brightness up to 192. Now I don't like this blue ceiling and I remember using, well, no, okay. I was going to copy and paste this, but that's not the texture I thought it was. Grab these two sectors. We're going to edit the ceiling and use ceiling five underscore one for this dark gray almost black pattern. And then I'm just gonna copy this star tan here and call that good. What this accomplishes is the player is, you know, they're very early on going to uncover the exit door. And it's sort of like a foreshadowing thing if you wanted to call it that. Like the player's not gonna have to search for the exit. They're gonna find it right away. I'm gonna change this to be a key door. But you know, you're gonna step into this first building, you're gonna clear this room out, come down here and oh, there's the exit. Now you're going to know you're going to be spending the rest of the level trying to gain access to this, but you already know where it is. Sometimes I like that in comparison to other maps where you don't find the exit until the very end when the levels beat. A couple changes I want to make here. I said I wanted to make it a keyed door. We really need to indicate that it's keyed. Grab these two support three textures, edit them, go to doors. Let's make this a red key door. And so there's this door red texture. That's the red sort of key lock icon thing. And now we've visually indicated that this door requires a red key to open. Now to make it actually a door and to make it actually require a red key, I'm gonna go to line def mode, select these two door textures, uh, these two line defs, right click, and we're gonna look under actions, bring up this thing, and let me give you a little zoom in here, and we're gonna expand doors. Now what we want is we're going to use DR door red open weight close. And this is action 28. This is the same exact thing as action one that we used a few videos ago, but it's going to require a red key to activate and monsters can't activate it at all. Uh, since this is a keyed door, I don't want monsters to be able to activate it because that allows the player to potentially skip a large part of the level if a monster just happens to bump the door. We're going to do this and hit OK. And we'll do a quick test. I'm going to hit F9, launch Crispy Doom, step into our building. 
And if I try to use this, oh, I'm really sorry. I have been zoomed in this entire time. There we go. Hopefully, hopefully what I was saying was enough for you to follow along. Walk up to this door, and if I try to use it, it says you need a red key to open this door. So that was what that action does. And if I ID KFA, now I can open the door. Of course, there's no exit room on the other side, so we'll address that soon. Now, the next thing I want to do, in my strong opinion, 98% of the time, you need to signal that this is the exit. Most players don't like it when the exit is a surprise. And what I mean is you just cross a magic line def and the level ends. Or you see a switch and you don't know what it does and you hit it and the level ends. So you want to do something just to visually indicate that yes, this is the end of the level. Now I'm already using the exit door here, which is probably good enough, but I, I really like to be explicit. What I'm going to do is go back to map mode. I'm going to draw a 32 by 8 box right in front of the door. I'm going to make sure it's centered. If you look up here, there's four boxes, and down here there's four boxes, one on each side, so that's well centered. Grab this little sector, pull it down two ticks. I'm going to shift click this whole thing. And under textures, I'm going to look at base. I'm going to filter on the word exit. And here's this exit sign texture. I'm going to grab that. And you see the way it repeats? We have the, the red E on the sides. So I want to grab those two. Drag these over to that part of the texture. And now, like, th there's just no doubt. The player's going to come around here and be like, yep, that's the exit. If there's a switch on the other side or a teleporter on the other side, that's going to be the exit, and it's not going to surprise me. Now, let's, uh, let's make an exit room. I'm going to kind of mirror this with a 45 degree angle here. And I'm just going to do something like this. And I'm going to draw a line here. Now it inherited the brightness, so this is insanely bright, which is fine. I'm going to take this red door bars texture and I'm going to paste it here. This door requires a red key from both sides, so this is just me being really complete and, you know, making sure there's no doubt in the player's mind about that. I talked about height variations. I'm going to go ahead and grab these two sectors. Down one tick, down one more tick. And just give a little bit of height variation here. And I'm going to use step one as our steps here. I'm going to need to decrease brightness because 256 is really bright. I'm going to bring that to 192. And down here should be dimmer than that. So we'll do 160. Now, in keeping with sort of the episode one, knee deep in the dead style, I'm going to grab all these star tan textures. And I'm going to change these to, I remember the, the word tech, T-E-K. Yeah, we're going to use tech wall four. Grab those, do a quick auto align, and here's, this will be our exit room. Now, I broke one of John Romero's design rules here. One of his rules is you should change floor textures whenever you change heights. So we have this blue carpet down here, and up here, this is something different. So we should change this. I think, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab these, pull up our floors, and see what we have. I want to keep it sort of a dark texture. I like the dark theme that's going on, so I don't want anything too bright. So let's just use floor 4-8. This is sort of that hexagon metal plate pattern thing. Simple, and it works. Uh, copy that. Paste here, paste here, paste here, here, and here. And then, you know, once we get off the stairs, we've changed our height level, it's okay to switch back to the blue carpet. And lastly, we need an actual exit switch in this room. I'm gonna go back to map mode, and I'm gonna create a little cubby that is 64 units wide. I'm just following the blue lines that mark the 64 by 64 grid. I don't know how well those show on YouTube. Um, when I was editing and verifying my uploads, they looked a little hard to see. But this right here is a blue line, and this right here is a blue line, and those are 64 units apart. And switch textures are generally 64 wide, so that's why I'm going for that. And I'm going to make this uh, 16 deep, and I'm going to draw a line here. And on either side, I'm going to make a little line def of length 24. 
I'm just gonna continue our our support three usage as a dividing texture. I'm gonna fly over here and grab it and copy and paste because that's faster than going through the menu sometimes. Paste here, paste here, make sure our texture offsets are zero. Now for this side, I'm gonna use a light texture. I'm going to use light five, which is the 16 wide lights. This back wall, we need a switch. So we're gonna look at the switches group. And for this case, I think we're just gonna use switch one comp, which is this computer panel looking thing. We're gonna fix the offsets. And that's not good because that is down in the floor. We'll just drag that up, see how it looks. Okay, so we run into a slight problem because our ceiling height doesn't match this texture. And I'm going to show you a trick I use sometimes in order to work around this. What I want is this upper part here to look different above this seam. When I go to uh, map mode, I'm going to make a tiny little sector here. I'm doing three sides because that's the minimum sides. Go back to visual mode. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this back texture because that's what I want. I'm going to drag this up, paste that. And what I'm after is I want this switch seam to line up with the top there, like that. I'm going to grab this floor, drag it up until we have that seam there right on the floor. And then I'm going to take the ceiling and drag it down till here. So what I've done, now instead of having a mid texture that spans this entire space, we have separate upper and lower textures and we can do a couple different things here. I'm going to grab this upper texture, go to computer, and I'm just going to use comp span, which is that same computer panel looking thing but without all the circuit boards and stuff in it. So that looks better in my mind, and that's just a little trick you can use to to get one wall that has two different types of texture on it. You just create you know, a sector behind it. Make the floors and ceilings the same height, move the height to where you want the texture seam to be, and then you have an upper texture up here and a lower texture down here. Now to make this an exit door, I'm going to right click on the, on the wall, look at our actions, look at the exit actions, and we're just going to use this simple one, action 11, this is switch 1 exit level. So that's going to make it act like a switch, it can only act, be activated once, and when the player activates it, then the level will end. Now I want to do a lighting effect here as well. We have these lights here and I could just crank the brightness, but that's boring. So I'm going to grab this sector, we're going to look at the specials. Now with line devs they call them actions, but with sectors they call them specials. Bring this up, uh, let me give you a little zoom in here. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to start with light glows. And we're going to see what that does. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and launch the game and see how this goes. I need to ID KFA to give myself a uh, red key. And you can see that actually did nothing. So I didn't set that up right. I think light glows maybe goes from the sector's brightness to the adjacent sector. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this full bright at 256. The editor doesn't show the effect, so it just looks full bright. But let's see what that does in game. ID KFA, get our cheat for our red key. Come in here. Yeah, so now you see how there's sort of this subtle glow going on here. And if I hit the switch, it's going to exit the level. I want to tweak this a little bit. I'd like it to go darker. So this sector behind it, I'm going to go to that and I'm going to turn the brightness down to Let's try 1112. I think what this effect does, light glows on a one second period, it's going to go from its brightness that it's set to, to the darkest adjacent sector, which we just changed to 112. So it's going to, it's going to flash from one, 112 up to 256. Let's just confirm that real quick. Okay, so now when it's at the dark side of its flashing, it's darker than it was before. So that's just a good effect. You know, you're going to step through here. Switch is glowing, looks good. And I think that's going to cover it for this segment, so stand by, stay tuned for the next video, and thanks for watching.